And we welcome you on to another Perry's Inside Scoop. Tim Leonard this week with new interim head coach Nunzio Campanelli with us as we get you ready for the Cuse and Wake Forest. It is the regular season finale for the Orange. And coach, I'm sure it's been a busy, kind of challenging couple days for you. How's the transition going overall for you and the coaching staff to uh, this point? It's going well. You know, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, there's a lot of emotions in a week like this when that happens. You know, uh, obviously, uh, the coaches and players all have a tremendous respect for Coach Babers. And, you know, I mean, really, everybody here loves him. So, you know, that part of it's tough. But on the other hand, uh, we got a great opportunity ahead of us coming up this week. Opportunity to get bowl eligible, senior days, a lot of things that we need to celebrate for our players and our program. So uh, we're going to try to manage both of those things. Yeah, and I'm sure it helps a little bit that you've gone through a similar situation at Rutgers. You were elevated to the interim head coach there not that long ago. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I have been through this process <laughs> before. And, uh, you know, that was a little bit of a longer run. And, you know, uh, so it was, it was a different situation, but I've definitely, you know, done it before. And, uh uh, you know, these guys here have just been great this week. You know, I, like I said, we have a lot to play for. Uh, we have a lot to look forward to. So from that standpoint, uh, they've done a good job of focusing on, you know, what's ahead rather than, uh, you know, what's behind. Definitely been no quit in this team all season long. We even saw that last week. I know it was a loss to Georgia Tech, but coming from behind and making that a game of valley and effort from this group. And like you said, it's senior day. It's bowl eligibility on the line. So these guys will be motivated this week, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And I agree. They have uh, continued to play hard no matter what. You know, it was pretty daunting situation down 24-3 and, you know, especially the kind of style of offense we've been playing and just to see the way the guys just kept fighting, you know, kept getting after it together and, you know, got it right back to, you know, a two-point game and, you know, unfortunately we couldn't get it over the finish line, but uh, definitely uh, showing a lot of pride. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of the Syracuse fans watching are kind of meeting you for the first time this week, getting to know you a little bit and digging in on you and reading up on you a little bit. What can you tell us about your overall background and what got you into coaching in the first place? Kind of in my blood, I guess. Yeah. You know, my, my dad has been coaching football. He's still coaching. He's 78. He's uh, He's been coaching football since, I think, 1963. So uh, I have three brothers. They're all football coaches. Uh, you know, I'm, my two sons play football. You know, it's kind of pretty rooted in what we do. Um, and, you know, when I got out of college, I actually started, I was, I started coaching in college. And, uh, you know, I was coaching with my dad. He had somebody uh, drop out and he needed a guy and he asked me to do it. Uh, so I just finished stopped playing football and I, I started doing that. And it's kind of been a heck of a climb. You know, I spent 10 years at, at Don Bosco Prep in New Jersey as the offense coordinator and then eight years as the head coach at Bergen Catholic before I went to Rutgers. And at Rutgers, I wore a bunch of hats, uh, you know, got a lot of great experience and then, you know, got to spend this year here and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and as a New Jersey guy, I'm sure you have fond memories of the Cuse brand and watching some great teams growing up. No doubt. I mean, you know, I, I always said, like, when, when I was a kid, it was, you know, basically Penn State, Notre Dame, and Syracuse on TV, you know, and maybe a little Doug Flutie. So, uh, you know, that, that was, uh, you know, a lot of great teams. And then, you know, right in my era, you know, the, you know McNabb and those guys, that was a whole lot of fun. And, uh, you know, really just been followed Syracuse football my whole life. So, uh, you know, to have this opportunity, even if it's for just a couple of weeks, uh, you know, is one of the proudest, greatest traditions in college football, you know, to have the opportunity to be in charge for a week or two uh, is really a great honor. Yeah, that's a great mindset overall. And I know a lot of what went into you being the guy filling in at the interim spot is your ties to that area and recruiting wise. So, What's kind of your message been to some of the recruits that I'm sure you've been in contact with this week, trying to keep them committed to the program? Well, I mean, this is a phenomenal school uh, with an incredible tradition. Uh, and, you know, we're really, we're not far off. I mean, you know, we're right there, uh, right around bowl eligibility. And that's not like a one-year thing. That's, you know, multiple years. You know, we got a lot of talented players on this team. The future is really bright. You know, just, uh, you know, obviously there'll be some change in leadership, but, you know, Syracuse is a brand that's trending up and it will continue to trend up you know I mean I think that there's just so many great opportunities and as a high school coach for you know 20 years you, you kind of see that guys have success uh, when they stay within that you know three and a half four four and a half hour radius you know I mean the majority of my players that did that had more success than the guys that went far away so the guys that are you know in our footprint uh, really have to be the foundation of what we do. And, you know, I'm sure that that's kind of always been the case and will continue to be the case. Yeah, you've touched on it a little bit, and I think it's a good point. I heard uh, John Wildtech say recently as well about 
how it's not a total rebuild here. You know, you guys are close to bowl eligibility this week, and it seems like the mindset of the players is in a good spot. But as you look towards Wake Forest this week, what kind of stands out when you've gotten to dig in on the Demon Deacons? Oh, well, you know, obviously, uh, Coach Clawson is one of the best coaches uh, in college football. Uh, they, uh, they've had a tremendous run of success, you know, over the last, you know, whatever, five, eight years. I don't know. It's been quite a while. And uh, they're a great challenge. I mean, some of the things they do on offense and defense, you know, they're very well coached in the special teams. I mean, they're, they're a super well coached team. They're tough. They're physical. They're disciplined. And, you know, we're going to have to match that and, you know, maybe exceed it. But uh, we have to really – so much of it is going to be us handling the things that we're dealing with in-house. You know, if we do that, I think we'll be in really good shape. I think it should be an excellent game. I think we're pretty evenly matched. Um, so, you know, there's an opportunity, you know, people to come out and see a great ball game on Saturday. Yeah, also Senior Day on Saturday, which is very important to honor the seniors in the appropriate way. Coach, it seems like you've got the right mindset. You're the right guy for the job right now. We appreciate you taking some time with us, and best of luck on Saturday. Appreciate it, Tim. All right, that is the Perry's Inside Scoop, proudly made in New York.